Hello and welcome to Tommy Surfs, the place where web surfers and wave surfers are the same people. Um, just wanted to show you this board and one of my pet peeves, and that is finger pressures. Why do people squeeze boards that they haven't bought? I don't understand the logic. If it didn't dent, would they buy it? Anyways, uh, some people have asked me to do a video on... Uh, traction pad placement and foot placement so I thought I'd do a quick one and post it. Enjoy! Alright, someone asked me where and how to place a deck pad so I'm going to give you the short answer which is it all depends on the board. Uh, every board's different. This one here is a dedicated quad and the worst part about it, it's a swallowtail and they're the hardest. Okay. But more or less, I personally, and this might be different for everybody, but I personally like to be over the rear fin. So if it's a thruster, I like my kick pad at the back edge of the thruster. And if it's a quad, I like it actually a little further back, given that this is a swallowtail, that might be difficult. So I'm going to put it at the, the rear edge of this fin to see how that uh, feels. But the way I'm going to do it is measure from the bottom first. So if I were to kind of line up this rear edge from this side, it, it should probably look something like that. Now, looks like I got a little bit more room, so I can go further back, maybe like right here. So I could actually be maybe a half inch further back. Um, so that's going to be it. I'm going to put it uh, about right there. And so you see me hanging off right there. I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but I'm kind of hanging off this straight, the edge. So I'm going to have to cut it. Okay, now I've already done that. I wanted to explain what's happening on the top now. And if you notice, I don't know if you notice, in fact, let me put these two together and you'll see what I cut off. If you notice, if you line the two up, I cut off a little corner, okay? So I'm gonna have to do that on both sides. But by doing so, what I've done now is I can go right up to the edge of this swallowtail, right? I can go right up to the edge of the swallowtail without hanging off. And I want to give myself a few millimeters so that way the uh, adhesive can actually stick. So that's the goal right there. Right? If it's stuck properly, like that. Now, on this side, when I do that, same, let's say, measurement, what's going to happen is uh, I'm going to basically cover up my leash plug. I don't know if you can see that in the video. Um, that's how it is right there. So I'm going to have to pretty much cut a notch out of this too just to make sure that I have access to it. Further back the better. Um, the reason being is, and, and if it turns out to be too far back, I have the option to just step forward a bit, right? If you don't put it far back enough, what happens is if your sweet spot's here, then you're screwed. You're going to have to take it all off and put it back on, uh, put a new pad on. So anyways, that's how I like to uh, measure up. Okay, we're ready. First things first, obviously, clean the surface, but they already cleaned it at the shop for me, so just going to get all the dust off. The pad I'm using is going to be temporary anyway, so drying. One thing I wanted to make clear, and I don't know if I did in the first part of this video, is that what you're lining up, and this is hard because this particular traction pad has kind of this rounded kick stop. I like one that's more abrupt, but basically this point right here is what you want to line up with the back of the fin as I mentioned. First things first, I'm going to do this side. I don't know, that's tar I think or oil. I'm not sure what's on there. I usually peel it halfway like that. That way I can sit there and line it up with the front half and it's not going to stick, right? And when I feel pretty comfortable, roll the back half. And the reason I roll it is because I don't want any air bubbles in here. And I notice the part that always comes off first on traction pad is this area right here because between here and this little padding, uh, there seems to be like a seam. So the air gets in there, water gets in there, and then from there it spreads. And then anywhere else there's, you know, friction between, let's say, your knee or your leg that's always constantly rubbing up on it. So this back portion is on. Once that's on, I like to, like I said, roll it on. 
I don't take the whole pad off and and uh, just stick it on. I like to roll it on, get all the air bubbles out, make sure it's on. All right, there it is. I'm leaving my leaving a little bit of a gap the size of this little stripe. Uh, thought it looked cool and I'm not sure how important this part is anyway. Uh, and again, temporary, so I don't really care. All right, so here I'm gonna line this up and I have to think about how much of this I have to cut out for this uh, leash plug. If I was as good a surfer as like Machado or any of the pros, I'd probably just say, ah, screw the leash, but I lose my board quite often. So if you notice, that's there. It actually still covers it up. Okay, let me see if I can bring this around. Uh, but I can see the rod. And I cut a little bevel here so the string can go around. But the tug on a leash, it's always going to be this way towards the back. So I don't really think it's important that this side's all that exposed. Because the way you want to do this, and it's funny, when I was a kid, I didn't think about this. And I, and I don't know why. I think when I was a kid, they just sh they sold really short leash cords. And so you could only go untie it once, tie it, which was kind of ridiculous. Because uh, it definitely seems more logical to do it this way. So the idea is keep it looped up and you want to double up. Uh, one thing about the old days I remember is our leash cords used to wear out. So the way I do it is, I'm pretty sure this is the way most of you guys do it, right? It's more or less, you go around once, right? Already tied and you end up with that. And you want your leash to go through this hoop as well as this hoop. So what you basically have is two cords holding on to here. And uh, it doesn't wear as quick. There's that. Peel this sucker and let's get to it. Let me move the camera so I can work a little bit better. And here we go. Same thing. I just start off with a little bit. Okay. And this way, like I said, move it around freely until uh, you're ready to stick it on there. And just make sure it's lined up. Okay, and then roll it on. Roll it on, roll it on. Get all the air bubbles. You don't want a giant air bubble in the middle. And funny, I see pros literally just take it off and slap it on, but they get their traction pass for free. You only get one chance at this. Otherwise it costs you 40 bucks. All right, this is kind of Slippery. Got a little pressure. And I don't know. I think that's tar to get that off. Okay. There it is. Looks pretty cool. All right. What do you guys think? Got the performance quads on there. Got the deck pad on there. Kind of like the way that looks. It's actually, I bought an orange set and a blue set and then I just split them so that way I got a cool interesting color set complimentary right uh, but anyways this is the El Tomo 5.6 so this video is also kind of a preview to what's coming which is the review of this board uh, feels good under my arms doesn't, doesn't look too short feels a tad big uh, and heavy for a firewire but uh, yeah I'm Maybe I could have gone with a 5.5, but like I said, I, I kind of wanted to get the 5.6 because I wanted to do a review uh, on the heels of my 5.6 Modern 2, which is a 2 plus 1, but um, I really love that board, the way it feels. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to try to stick to that theme of making sure I have enough uh, swing weight and length and rail line. Uh, this has a much straighter rail line, so I'm not sure exactly how that's going to defer. But so the last part of this video I want to cover is foot placement. Someone asked me to do a video about foot placement because uh, I think in several videos I talk about you know where I was standing. So ideally the best place to drive speed uh, is going to be somewhere between the front of the back fin and your entire front fin. 
So anywhere in this spot, you're going down the line. And we're talking like, um, I guess, like tic tacking and, and, and pumping down the line, right? You're going to get, there's more surface area uh, uh, on the two bigger fins. So you want to leverage that as best as possible, okay? And then you'll notice like pros do that. And then as soon as they're ready to do their bottom turn to an air or whatever it is, sometimes very subtle and other times very obvious, they'll slide their foot right back, okay? And that's actually where you want to be when you do a turn because you're going to have the most amount of control over those back fins. In fact, on the back half of those fins, which is why I say you should line up this little stop where that starts should be on a quad behind uh, the rear fins, okay? On a thruster, like right at the edge. So if you've made it this far into the video, I really appreciate you uh, watching. And if you haven't already, please subscribe, like, and definitely comment, because uh, I like the conversations, because I also learn a lot from you guys who ride different boards and uh, different concepts. Um, stay tuned for the review of the Tomo, El Tomo.